SPAC attack. What happens when hot IPOs and financings hit the market in tech and gold? Initial public offerings, or IPOs for short, are riding high right now. You might have heard about the Snowflake IPO making headlines. It's a company with a special type of deal structure that most investors might not have heard of before. And leading the charge and fury in the IPO markets are SPACs, short for Special Purpose Acquisition Vehicle. SPACs start as a shell company and sell shares to investors. It doesn't have any operations or a business of its own. The purpose is to acquire one that does have a business. It's like a backdoor route for large sums of money, think $100 million or more, to get into the stock market. Investors and private equity funds behind these SPACs love it because there is much less underwriting and the paper pushing process through the SEC is easier. Much like private placements in the red hot mining space, which we'll get to in a moment, SPACs have rules. SPACs have a deadline of 24 months to actually acquire a business. If they don't, investors get their money back with interest. And you can also request your money back if you don't like the acquisition. However, you can make money with SPACs and quickly. Anyone that invested in the Vectol Q SPAC before or during its acquisition of Nikola Motors, NKLA, could have made 10 times returns. We recently alerted subscribers to a SPAC in the KRO, that's the Katusa Resource Opportunities Newsletter Portfolio. It's up 30% since the first research report just a few weeks ago. You would expect with all the headlines that the IPOs are flooding the market. In fact, in the next chart you're looking at right now, you'll see that the year to date in 2020, we've seen the second lowest number of IPOs in six years. That number is 113. But the return of those IPOs through the lens of the Renaissance IPO index is much higher than the last six years. That's what you're looking at right now. So what happens when new paper shares are created? Capital flows are one of the least understood, most closely guarded secrets in the resource sector. Bull and bear markets are driven by expansions and contractions in capital flows. This capital comes from everyone, like retail investors, all the way to trillion dollar sovereign wealth funds. Knowing how to profit from these title changes in the market is incredibly important for the contrarian investor. We have all heard a few marquee lines relating to buy when there's blood in the streets or the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. You know it's time to sell when shoeshine boys give you stock tips. Yeah, that's all great in theory, but I want to talk about the last one. Being a good seller is as important as being a good buyer and stock picker. Realizing a profit is important, but selling is a lot more than placing a market sell order for your entire position and moving on. You need to be smart when you sell. Selling should be just like your alligator buying strategy, slow, methodological, and strategic. Always use limit orders. Never hit the market. Let the buyers come to you. Discipline is required on both the buying and selling of shares. And here's why. How to prepare for amateur hour. I want to use my points above to help you understand how fund managers who get redemptions and amateur investors sell and put pressure on a stock. And my expertise is in finding and getting my subscribers and myself into resource deals like gold, oil, copper, uranium, and silver. We are coming into the last four months of a year that has seen share prices of both good and bad gold deals soar because of the rise in the gold price. Throw in a U.S. presidential election, and I believe we're going to see pressure on many resource stocks. Now, this could be a major opportunity for us. Let the volatility be your friend if you're prepared. Let's start with how much capital has been raised in the metals and mining sector. Last year, we saw equity financings rise above $12 billion for the sector, a value not seen since the last run-up from 2009 to 2011. 2019 spike was due in large part to one deal called Katanga's Mining's $7.6 billion rights offering, and that was involving Glencore. If you remove that, equity financings total just $4.9 billion, which would make 2019 the worst year since 2008, when the TSX began releasing statistics. It was a very tough year for many companies. 2020 will be an improvement. Gold has performed well, and financings are already approaching over $4 billion. What's more important is that these financings represent versus the sector's market capitalization. How much money really went into the precious metal sector? The chart you're looking at right now 
you will see equity financings as a percentage of sector market cap. Historically, financing is represented between 3.5% to up to 8% of the sector's market cap. Over the last five years, financings have cratered. So that's why you see the chart. Focus on the red ellipse. You see the green dots are showing that the trend is down. Again, if you remove Katanga's rights offering, the financings in 2019 would have represented just 1.7% of the sector's market cap. That's the red dot in the ellipse. Even with the precious metals market rocking thus far in 2020, financings have represented just 1% of the sector's market cap, the lowest representation since at least 2008. For the last seven years, the trend has clearly been towards less and less capital going to work, regardless of sector performance. This means that although mining stock prices are rising, financings are not increasing at the same rate. You can attribute this trend to three different factors. Prices are rising faster than the financings are happening. I don't think that's the case when compared to previous cycles. The bigger funds and the generalist funds have not yet gone into the mining financings like they have in the past. That's definitely true. Things have changed. Passive funds are focusing on ETFs rather than on specific equities. This last one is where I believe the significant changes. But with all new IPOs, listings, financings, deals that are hitting the markets, what happens to all those new shares once they start trading. Free trading stock will flood the market this fall. Yes, we are data nerds and we compile incredible amounts of data that others do not. Scouring through our two best data terminals along with the TSX financing data, that's the public information through the exchange, we have compiled a chart that you will not see anywhere else. Ironically, if you use the, each data terminal individually, you would get three different numbers for financings this year and every other year. As you know, a large portion of equity financings are conducted through private placements. Shares in those financings are restricted for 120 trading days after the close of the financings. It is only under an IPO or a short form prospectus financing that there is no four month hold. Once the 120 days are up, the shares become unrestricted and investors in the private placements are free to sell their shares. For every seller of shares, there needs to be a buyer of those shares. It's not rocket science to expect that the stocks that have financings coming free trading will trade lower. The expiration of the restrictions can create significant selling pressure as investors look to recoup their capital all at the same time. The gold and silver paper wall. You'll want to pay attention to this. The chart you're looking at right now combines the data sets and encompasses over 95% of the equity financings in the last 12 months. Certainly any equity financing over 5 million. From this new data set, we've calculated the dollar amount of upcoming free trading stock. So beware, this is where the flood of paper will enter the market. The chart you're looking at, focus on that red rectangle. You can see starting in September, October, November, and December, there's significant amount of free trading paper hitting the market. The next four months have more paper hitting the market than the previous eight. In fact, I estimate over $2.5 billion worth of mining sector stock will go free trading over the next four months on the exchanges that will be selling pressure directly into the market. The majority are gold and silver stocks. This is an enormous amount of capital for the mining sector to be able to absorb because it still is a very niche market. To put it in perspective, if I do not want to disrupt normal trading activity, it can take many days or months for me to close positions worth over seven figures. Now, extrapolate my situation to the entire market and it's two and a half billion dollars which is coming free trading. This creates a serious problem for relatively e-liquid listed mining companies. I highly doubt there is three or four billion of new capital coming into the market to absorb those shares that are coming free trading in the open market at current prices, which are much higher than the financing prices. Here's a real life example of a situation like to experience major havoc sometime this fall. A small junior whose management team I have never heard of and that has never been involved in mining before raised 2 million in May. Share prices since the private placement are up 800%, not including the warrants. The company trades 225,000 shares a day. That's nothing. The private placement was for just 30 million shares. Again, the math doesn't lie. Converting paper profits to realized profits will be nearly impossible for those investors without hitting the bid and taking the share price significantly lower.
The list of these types of deals is pages long. Most of the companies are doing financing to keep the lights on or to fund a promotion to raise the price so they can actually unload stock. I've always avoided those types of pie in the sky, burning matches, and I'll continue to avoid them my entire career. The risk reward is horrible. However, many good companies also financed earlier this year, and most certainly there will be investors looking to recoup some principal. In the event of a sudden sell-off or a few bad days in the gold market, it can provide us alligators with major opportunities if you're prepared when the opportunity arises. And we've run the numbers on a handful of companies we want to own. They are on our alligator watch list. As the newly created shares come free trading, there will be pressure on many gold and silver stocks. Prepare for that opportunity well before it comes. It could be your last ticket to pick up shares of some great gold and silver stocks on the cheap. Stay safe.